Hi guys, Squilla here. Welcome back to my Transport Fever 2 playthrough, or let's play, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the goal is to get to one billion dollars. We're on hard mode and we're going to connect all the cities. That's the goal here. Along the way, of course, you'll, you'll learn tips and tricks, hopefully, and uh, probably throw in a few of your own in the comments section, no doubt. <laughs> yes. uh, but, you know, if you're new here, consider subscribing, right? There's a nice playlist for you um, of, of the previous episodes, and we're going to go right through to the bitter end. Now, in the last episode, we did a few things. We kind of tidied up the whole thing going on up here. But the important thing that we did was we put in this food run. Uh, this train. There's only one train running on it at the moment, but it is quite a quick train. But we are still turning a profit. We have uh, no company loan now, and the money's starting to build up nicely. There's a few problems on the network, some of which we know about, uh, some of which have kind of surfaced a little bit. Obviously, one of them's down here. To do the sheer amount of grain that these trucks cannot move like they if you look at the frequency they're hopping in um you know it's about as quick as it can get uh, there is a solution on the way in terms of the available trucks because these trucks only have a capacity of seven and the opal blitz truck comes out in 1935 so that will more than double that capacity however this thing has just finished leveling up and is now throwing out insane amounts of, uh, of grain that we can't move. So one option, of course, is to consider just training that um, over. And we may have to do it, but we'll wait till 1935, see if the trucks can take over. If not, we'll have to replace that with a train. It seems ridiculous at such a short journey, but unfortunately, the capacity of the truck is what it is. The alternative is that you effectively split the line. So instead of having one line, you create two lines. And you have two separate truck runs uh, dropping stuff off, which is a perfectly valid thing to do. And we could we could even do that now. Just add another platform run. Um, we could probably just delete that. It doesn't matter. These are all cosmetic, by the way. It costs you money, but it doesn't affect um, the, the the grain production. In case you didn't know that. Also, there's passengers to consider. And what's going on up here with the the whole train thing on the black gold run? Uh, you can see this is not looking fantastic at the moment. What's actually happening is it's crude starved. Um, we kind of knew this already. We talked about this, but there's not enough crude coming in here. As you can see, there's a train on the way just as it's running out, but it needs a lot more. Uh, but we're still making a profit, so we've left it as it is. And of course, we know about these trains here going slowly, uh, so they're not getting the oil over here, so the fuel's not coming back. It's a problem because Loughton is not getting enough fuel. Uh, Mablethorpe is not getting enough fuel. There's much more money to be made here. However, I also want to focus on the passenger side of things. Um, we're nearing the point where we can get passenger trains, but we're not there yet. It is a big mistake to put them in too early. Uh, you have to build up the demand first. So we've, we've started on the right road. We're building up the cities. Um, we've grown the population a bit by supplying them with materials. And if we look at what's going on internally... You can see that Romsey's got a lot. He said the blue is private transport, and we have no public transport. And we know that public transport will grow a city and also take some of this traffic off the road. You can see there's an awful lot of traffic here uh, traveling up to Thatcham. And from Thatcham, there's, there's some traffic, and then obviously a journey uh, up to Mablethorpe. Mablethorpe's got traffic within it, and then there's a lot of traffic. Now, remember back at the start of this, there was hardly anybody driving this route. But now there's a lot because Loughton's grown uh, and Loughton, um, you know, everybody wants to get out of their own city and visit other cities. That's just the way it works. And they'll do it by whatever means necessary. So what I want to do is I want to set up some internal bus networks on each of these cities, which will help them grow a little bit. And then we'll have some bus routes between uh, these major cities just to try and um, capture some money and improve the growth of the cities in lieu of putting a train there. Uh, so let's start with, with Romsu. We'll give this an internal um, bus circuit. So the first thing I like to do uh, when, when I do this is look at the city and, and have a quick think about um, roughly what circuit the buses will run on. Like, there are effectively two different styles of doing this, really. There's like a circuit where you, you have a bus go around clockwise and or anti-clockwise, and then there's the hub and spoke where you have a central bus hub and then you send out buses on one circuit, send out other buses on a different circuit. There's no real right way of doing this. It kind of depends on the city design and your own personal preferences. Uh, but always keep an eye on what you want to do next. So, for example, uh, if we wanted to connect Romsey with Thatcham via a train when there's too many people on the buses, which will happen, 
Um, we'll probably have to have a station. Um, I would suggest maybe south side of southeast side of Romsey and you know punt it off down to Lee. Maybe bring it in this way. Do we want to like hook it back and and drop it off here and make that our passenger hub? Because if we want to make this our passenger hub in the future, well, it might make sense to to think about putting the bus station around here now rather than you know chucking it over here. Uh, just try and get one step ahead of yourself and just think, well, what do we want to do? The alternative is we could probably build a train platform here um, and and have the you know the trains instead of hooking back, they kind of just go through and that would allow them to continue up to Loughton. So that's possibly a better design. Obviously, there's a bit of a hill issue here. Uh, which you can flatten. We haven't looked at the, the, the tools yet, the landscaping tools, but if you click on them, uh, there is a smooth tool and a flattened tool. So you can you know, increase the brush size here, uh, increase the, the density of the brush, um, and then the strength you can slide with this thing here. But it does cost you money. So for example, if we go with the flatten tool, um, we, if wherever you start clicking the mouse is the level it will then take. So if we hold that down, you can see that was like 145 grand, and we can now come in and just flatten that whole area so we just got rid of an entire um, hilly area that we didn't like and we've now flattened it if you put it on the smooth tool you can then just smooth that out so that then landscapes it and paves the way for a nice train station here which sounds like a smart move to me so I think what we'll do is we'll have our bus station maybe over here and when we build our train station we'll build it here have these lines run through, put a passenger terminal on that side so we can have our bus station maybe here somewhere uh, with that with that bridge running there. That's a, that's one design, there's like many others, you know, <laughs> there's loads of ways of doing this. Um, but, you know, in terms of what we're trying to do now, we know that we want a bus station probably on this side and a bus station here. Uh, and then when it gets to Loughton, we know we're going to use this as passengers. So we want our bus station out here somewhere and we're just you know, hub and spoke it, maybe do it that way. Um, Mablethorpe haven't really thought about in terms of train station, but if we've got a, a train station here at Thatcham, you know, it's not unreasonable to sort of branch off that way and link Mablethorpe into Thatcham. Maybe not do that just because it's a hilly area. And if they've got, if they can connect via Thatcham, that's fine, you know. So let's start off with our uh, little bus station down here. We want it to be out of town. We also want to have a train station here at some point. So in terms of the bus station, we'll come in with the building and do the bus tram thing. We'll have zero on the left. We'll have a few platforms and we'll make them 30 meters now, nice and big. Uh, and we'll maybe bring it like that kind of orientation. Just trying to keep in a bit of a distance from the city because um, it will grow into this. Uh, don't worry, don't you worry about that. But we'll configure it now and we'll just make it a little bit longer. Um, there you go. We're, because we've got some money now, we can we can start to be a little bit more adventurous. So we're street access in, street access out. Uh, and this is the way I always do them. So the buses always come in, they, they go into the stop and then they run out again. That's just a way that works. Uh, now in terms of them getting around, this is where you want to start thinking about now we've got a little bit of money, you want to think about having wider roads uh, because you will get a lot of traffic. And the advantage of the wider road, of course, is you can actually add a bus lane. And at this point, we could even make it trams if you want to. We can just go fully electric, reduce the emissions. Um, what do emissions do? Emissions, if you look at them, uh, are effectively noise and they basically suppress city growth. Uh, make sure Romsey Starling is connected to the street network. Yeah, thank you, game. Um, they suppress city growth. If you look here, we've already got a 30% suppression on the growth just from all the kind of vehicles and trucks and things going through. Uh, if you was to have a train running right past this, it would make a lot of noise. If you have a plane flying over or you know, an airport nearby, it will suppress the growth of the city, so just bear that in mind. Uh, what we'll do is we'll upgrade that road there and then we shall loop it back. So we'll have a road that runs along here like that. This will be the main kind of, and we're allowing them to build on this so the city can grow on this if it wants to. Uh, and then we'll link that around like that. And then we shall upgrade that one. Notice that destroys some things. Sometimes 
you've just got to destroy things to, to do what's best in the long run. It will cost you money, it will knock out some houses or buildings, and it will, it will drop the population slightly in the short term. But in the long term, th there's a huge benefit. So we have a one-way street that comes in like that. Have a one-way street that goes back out like that. And there you go. That is my my basic bus station design, just out of town, and we'll we'll hub and spoke it here. Uh, we need to get a depot, but we've got one here, so that's fine. Let's define some routes. Um, so we're going to go B for buses, and we're going to go uh, Rom C. We'll just call it Rom C One for now. It doesn't matter, but it allows us to have more later. We'll make it like a green color. And uh, next thing we want to do is add some bus stops, go to buildings, and then we want these things here, which is the bus or a tram stop. Um, and then just think about, you know, where you want to move passengers around. You can obviously put the destinations layer up to give yourself an idea of where the traffic really is. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of traffic around here, around the commercial districts, which is not too surprising. Uh, but if we consider our buses are coming out this way, then we might want to have them, say, turn right, uh, drop off there, for example, and then they could... We could go that way, but at the moment there's not much going on, so maybe just have it loop back, uh, come over to perhaps here, like that, and then it could... We need to take care of this district so we can have one perhaps over there, and then on the way back, uh, we want them to come this way, so we'll have... Maybe one in the central district, perhaps, there like that. And those four will do for now. Um, there's a lot of coverage from a bus stop. You can't see it super clearly but um, in that view. But when you're in this view, you can see that you know, the area of coverage is quite wide. So one bus, you know, four bus stops at the moment will more than cover what we're, we're doing here. So we just need to go to add. Start there. We'll go one, two, three or like that and then just make sure that they're doing what you think they should be doing because sometimes the routing will get a bit crazy uh, and do things you don't want it to do if you want them to go a specific way what you can do is add a waypoint so if you go to waypoints here and let's say we want the buses to come instead of coming like this way and going straight to George Street let's just say we wanted them to come that way for whatever reason just an example click on waypoint put a waypoint down like that and then when you come to uh, your station list, uh, after New Road, which is number four, click Add Station, click on the waypoint, and it will then route it via that waypoint. If you don't want to do it anymore, just click that to get rid of it, and then, of course, you can just bulldoze that away. But that's how you can specifically route things around your network. So next thing to do is buy some buses. So we'll go to Buy Vehicles, we'll go Passenger, and then we just need to consider what bus we want. Like the, the demand at the moment, it's it's definitely more than eight. Like we've got, tw I'm seeing numbers of 20s and 30s and 40s and things like this. So just look at the cost. Um, buses will generally not make you a huge amount of money. Um, speed, 40Ks. Again, if you're going into city, you need the faster bus. So if we were going between the cities, I'd probably go for them just because it can do 40Ks. Uh, but around town, Arguably, capacity is a bit more of a, a concern. Um, also, emissions, if, you, if you're worried about that stuff. But just looking at the running costs, like 19 grand for 11 passengers versus 16 grand for nine. At this stage of the game, I'd probably just throw some of them in. So maybe like a good rule of thumb is one bus per bus stop. So with this, we've got five bus stops, so five buses um, is what, half a million. If I can click right. 600 grand it's a lot of money it's not really gonna uh, give us a return in terms of um, finances the best you can really hope for with buses I find is breaking even on especially on a city route that's not the primary goal the primary goal is to move passengers around um, which will help the city to grow you can see look 10% straight away 10% so we've just added like 23 residents just by creating a bus route um, the other thing is they move them to the stations. So when they get them here, when we drop a train station in, boom, passengers can get from there to the train and then go onward on their journey. So they have that kind of function. Uh, when we do the intercity, what we'll do is we'll bring them in to here and drop them off and then they can get a separate bus back into town. It's just how transport networks work uh, and they work well for that reason. This road, incidentally, when we link to Thatcham shortly, what we'll do is we'll replace this road 
with a higher speed road and will deliberately bring it into here uh, so that the traffic stays out of town and the buses can go straight to there and people can get on a bus rather than having you know plundering straight through town to come to here so what i'll do is i'll just create some bus circuits around these now um and then we'll uh, rejoin and put this road in and create an intercity bus network okay right i've gone around the cities and added uh, bus networks to each one i'll just quickly show you what i've done so with this one i've put the Loughton um, branch bus station just outside of town here extended that road because the station's going to build that way and we may wish to continue the line that way i didn't want to build it on this half so i just built it here it doesn't really matter it's a bit further out of town but it'll still connect in with that train station uh, i then put a line uh, four stops around there and there's buses running that circuit over at Mablethorpe, because I figured we might have a station on this side, uh, because I'm not sure we're on a run packs on that hilly bit. We might just come in here. So I'll put it outside of town here. And then same thing, just put four stops around there, running some buses on it. And then finally, uh, down at Thatcham, I destroyed a road here, which cost about half a million just to get rid of a, a bunch of housing. But I figured it was better in the long run, because I didn't want to be constrained uh, by this bridge, a bit more expensive to replace all of this than it is to just knock a street out and put a decent sized platform down. And like I say, if we build a train station here later, we'll be able to link it into that, no problem. Um, so if we have a, if you click down the bottom right here on the line statistics or press F2 um, and sort by balance, you can see what lines are making you the most money and what's making you the least money. And not surprisingly, um, one of the more one of the more uh, profitable lines just jump back there is the line that's taking whiskey and bringing back food because it gets paid in both directions it's going to always work to be more profitable you will notice the ones that are causing us a loss are all buses and this is what i was saying generally speaking you can expect them to run at a loss however if you click on thatcher thatcher's now got a 20 percent boost to its population uh, Romsey has got a 20% boost, Mablethorpe 20% boost, Loughton 20% boost. So in terms of, you know, the number of traffic we've taken off the road, there's now not as many people uh, doing private journeys. You can see the public transport's now kicking in. And this will grow over time. It'll start off small, but it will grow. Uh, what we're going to do now is link Thatcham and Romsey bus stations and try and get an intercity route going here. So what I'm going to do for now is leave this bridge. We might replace it later, but um, for now... I think it's going to be too expensive to upgrade it. If we try to um, upgrade it to one of the more expensive um, things like this. Actually, it's not as bad as I thought. 230,000. Uh, we could put a bus lane in, though, if we do that. Um, yeah, go on. Let's do it. 230,000. We'll upgrade that. That will give us the bus lane. That will allow us uh, to separate ourselves from the private transport that's on there. Because... As the traffic grows, they will start to gridlock and back up down this road. And uh, we don't want our buses getting snarled up in that. So we're going to pause it because we're about to disconnect. Uh, as it says, the main connection will be interrupted. Now, one tip for you when you're deleting these things, um, as you delete stuff, the the vehicles that are on it, the, the game's vehicles, the NPCs, if you like, they will get punted onto the next piece of road. So don't delete something here and then delete something here and ice because when you try and delete the rest of this you'll get to the last bit there'll be vehicles on it and it won't let you delete it so always delete from the middle outwards don't don't isolate a piece if that makes sense so we're just going to remove all of that and we're going to remove all the way back because if you look closely it, it will be punting cars back this way like that which is fine oh you see a lack of isolated a couple of cars there it might not be too happy with those. It'll just despawn those, I think. Let's see what happens, actually. If I delete these back, I'm not sure what the game will do. Oh, let me delete that. That's fine. That's okay. I think stuff on the main route, though, is a bit of an issue. Right, so that'll do for now. Perfect. We'll get rid of this. Maybe we'll use those later. Don't know. But for now, they can just get deleted we're also going to bring this road into a different place so it's important we do that so we'll leave that for now and we'll bring the road in and what we're looking for is a nice straight high speed road as flat as possible uh it'd be slightly more expensive that way you can see it's a million because we're carving through the countryside but it's a nice quick road and it's definitely going to improve transportation around here 
Uh, one thing you can do is, if you want to reduce the cost, you can look at building it in stages. Um, if you drag from here to here, what it will do is it will build a very flat road, but along the way it will have to elevate or depress ground, and, and the landscaping is what's costing the money here. The alternative way of doing it is the game would stop. Come on, game. Thank you. I'm not sure what all that was about. Um, okay. <laughs> One way of doing this is to um, effectively build it in stages. So you can build it up on a gradient and then allow it to drop back down again. It's up to you. It depends what you're comfortable with in terms of costings. But what we're going to do is just build it straight in like that. And the game's having a good think. 1.8 million to bring it there. That'll do. There we go, finally. It didn't. It really didn't like building that piece of road for some reason. And then what I like to do is just smooth it out just so it doesn't look, you know, as nasty. Is it, it tends to leave sharp edges, and, it, and this will cost a little bit of money, so it's purely cosmetic. It doesn't affect the game in any way. But what we've now got is a lovely high-speed connection between those two, so we can now press play again. And all those traffic will go down there. And now we can have an intercity Thatcham to Romsey bus service. So we'll do that. We'll create a line. We'll have B for buses. We'll have Romsey Thatcham buses. We, we won't put a number on it because it's unlikely we'll ever have another one. Um, because we'll, we'll just rather add a train line at that point. We'll go there to there. So just check the routing. Make sure it's doing exactly what you want. I mean cosmetically it would be nice if it only turned left there um, it would only make one left turn instead of two but what the game always does is shortest path analysis it will always take the shortest route it can no matter what and the only way around that as I said before is to drop a little waypoint uh, and then maybe after sidings go that way so you know we can just force it to do that now for this particular run we need high speed buses so we'll go to this depot here uh, by the way, 1935 came and we had a bunch of vehicles unlocked, as you can see here. So in a second, we're going to replace uh, all our aging bends with the Opal Blitz, which will certainly increase capacity. Uh, no new buses, though, but we'll take the 40k ones and we'll see. We had, I reckon, about six to eight for this initially. Um, we'll see how we get on. Don't want to run too many in case it uh, it causes problems but that should you got to limit your losses when you're playing on hard mode uh, that should reduce the number of um, private transports here and increase the number of public transports you can see there's not many people coming here but there's nothing to come here for yeah currently so you might be wondering why that's on one the reason it's on one this is how it disappeared for some reason the reason it was on one <laughs> was because nobody wants to go here as a destination, so they're all just getting off at the bus stops here and traveling around town, which is to be expected. Um, but now we've got an intercity bus service coming in, you'll start to see more people start to go here as a destination because they want to get the onward bus uh, down to Thatcham. Uh, let's just put that on high speed so we can speed that up. So that's one intercity bus route. Uh, we could do the Maplethorpe run as well, but what I'd like to do while we can is sort this out with opal um bus opal vehicles so we'll click on those we'll click manage vehicle and we've got 17 in total we're going to do all of them so we'll select all of them and then we click this button here which is replace selected vehicle we'll click on cargo and then we'll have a look we're carrying grain don't forget so as i said before when you've got a set of trucks always look for one specific to what you're doing there's an all-cargo version that does 60 kilometers an hour and carries 12, but there's a dump truck that does 60 kilometers an hour and carries 14, but it will only carry kind of raw material that goes in a dump truck. But we're carrying grain, so that's what we want. 3.8 million to replace, and that should improve the capacity on this no end. We just doubled our capacity uh, of moving grain out of here. So hopefully this number should start to punt upwards now. Now, when that happens, they're going to start bringing more grain and dropping it off. This should start to supply more. Therefore, the production will start to go up. So as long as we're shipping it, we'll start to grow. So then, well, now we're looking at this line and we're seeing that this is now struggling massively. We only put one train on it, if you remember. 
but we quite clearly need another one. Uh, this train, if you look at its finances, as we said before, does really well. Um, and if you just watch it a second, I think we'll find we can put more cars on the back of this um, because it gets up to speed relatively quickly and it's a very flat run because we did a very long uh, train line when we built this. So, you know, it's doing 60. If you put more cars on the back, it might take a little bit longer, but I think it's worth it. I think it's, it's worth having more cars and then having another train and we'll start to shift more stuff, make more food and make more money. So what we can do is we click on Manage Vehicle. You don't need to bring it into a depot in order to add more cars on the back. You can actually do it um, in situ. And I think Transport Fever 1 made you bring them back in the depot. I can't remember. But with Transport Fever 2, you can click this cog and you can edit the vehicle and you can reconfigure it. So what we want is uh, wagons, cargo, and then we want more of these box cars. The only thing to bear in mind is, is the length. Um, Obviously, the more cars we add, the more we'll slow the acceleration of the train down. Uh, so that's a factor if you're going uphill or if you've got a line where there's lots of uh, joins in the track and it might have to stop for uh, other trains or stop for road vehicles or whatever it, you know. If it has to stop and start a lot, acceleration becomes a real factor. The only other thing is don't make it too big because our platforms are 240 meters, so we can't go beyond that. But what we can do is we can click add um, and we can add a few more on the back so what i'm going to do is bring it up to about 200 meters so something around that mark 144 capacity if you hover over this it will tell you on the flat 148 seconds it's unlikely to get to its full speed um, but that's not the issue we're just trying to get more capacity on the line so we'll click modify and we'll repaint it because if you don't repaint it um, what will happen is it's more of that color, isn't it? Is that color? The new cars will sit on the end and they will not be the correct color. They'll be like the default color. I can find the train. Where, where have you gone? Where have you gone, bro? There you go. There you are. So, 200 meter train in a 240 meter platform. And you can see already that, you know, it's, it's taking 144 instead of 84, but it's going to take longer to get up to speed. However, we're going to move a lot more stuff now. So what we'll do is we'll click on Manage Vehicle and we'll click Clone, which is that one. We've got the cash. You see, went from 45 to 35, like nearly $10 million train. But don't worry about that. It will print money, this thing. Getting paid in both directions is the best, most profitable way to play this game. If you see a way of doing it, do it. Absolutely do it. Okay, so he's coming in. Let's have a look at what he's doing right. So you're filling up nicely. I reckon those two trains will more than be enough to take care of the capacity on this line. And we've got a lot of trucks here just waiting to move um, stuff, waiting for the food to come back. This is an empty train. That will nearly empty the platform. Look at that. That's fantastic. So those trains, I think, will take care of it. If we have a look at the onward train, you can see it does get to 80. But watch how much it gets paid. 2.4 million. <laughs> 2.4 million dollars. We didn't replace the engine or the cars. We just added more cars on the back. And now this thing is going to go through the roof. And with two uh, trains doing this, we'll be printing money all day long. It will no doubt be the most profitable line. This will be 4 million, I reckon. Easy. No problem at all. And we're making more food, which means we're selling more food into the towns, which means they're going to grow quicker, which means more passengers on the buses, etc. It's all about creating those feedback loops, those positive feedback loops. We do need to take care of the black gold line at some point. But for now, we just need to have a quick look at what's happening with our buses. Uh, you can see we are starting to get passengers wanting to get on the bus uh, down to Thatcham now. And if we have a look at the overlay, yep, just as I said, some people are starting to come in. They want to get the onward journey. And we've already got 16 packs on the, on the public transport line now. So it's not quite 40 odd, but it's um, it's probably starting to make a little bit of cash. If you have a look at the um, the balance sheet for a second. Romsey buses, where are you? Romsey Thatcham buses, almost breaking even. 24 out of 48. So we're not at capacity yet. You need to get to about 50% capacity to be breaking even, roughly, is how the game seems to work. 
Uh, you can see this one here, Romsey buses are, they have nowhere near enough passengers. Um, but the other ones are doing okay. In terms of growth though, 30% bonus. Yeah, some more people. So we're going in the right direction. Next thing is probably to replace this road here um, and add ourselves another bus circuit. So I will do that now. Right, let's have a look at what I've just done. So I've just replaced, got rid of all these little side roads and just chucked in a high-speed road with a bus lane all the way up through here. Uh, I didn't do it perfectly flat because it would have been too expensive, but this bit here I kept flat with a bridge. Uh, there was quite a gradient here, I think it was, that it wanted like three quarters of a million dollars, so I just I just let it slope, um, as you can see there. It's not too important with the vehicles. It's the trains that you have the big problems with that kind of thing. There's a little bit of touching up we can do, though. Uh, for example, this road here, um, if we press the line key, you can see the, new, the red line. I've got to put um, buses on this line, actually. Let me just quickly do that while I... Remember, by vehicle, passenger, fast one. Uh, let's give them half a dozen for now, see how they get on. Uh, Thatch and Mablethorpe buses, there we go. Um, this here, th obviously there's buses coming in this way and running that circuit. So before people start building here, it's a good idea to just get a bus lane in there. Uh, it's not too expensive at this stage, you see. Uh, but later on, when there's buildings there, that will get very expensive. Here they come. Uh, we will have to create bus lanes at some point because the traffic gets so bad uh, in the cities, it starts to get gridlocked and your buses can't move around and, and you know, things start to go bad. The lines start to cost you a lot of money. Um, but that will do for now. Down here, I brought the line. It used to come into there, the, the, the road. You can see there's the road. I'll just get rid of that. Um, but I brought it in over here. Now, we can already see that with Thatcham, it's got traffic going to Mablethorpe that way, and then traffic um, taking the bridge to Romsey that way. So this road here is quite an important road, and you can still already see the traffic just starting to get a little bit heavier. It will get a lot worse than this, trust me. Um, you know, can we upgrade the bus lane now? Well, we can have a look. Uh, that's three quarters of a million. See, that though has got nothing on it, so... That's, that's an easy win. Three quarters of a million there. Over half a million there. Three quarters of a million. Three quarters of a million. Almost a million. You know, it's probably a four million dollar bus lane. And it will remove a lot of buildings. There's seven bills being moved. Three removed. But, you know, at some point you have to, to bite the bullet on this. Because you're going to need to do it anyway. And it, the longer you leave it, the more expensive it gets. Because when you start getting to... Um, things like this where you've got skyscrapers <laughs> you know the amount of cost goes through the roof and but you've probably got the money by then so you can kind of either do it when you need to do it or do it early is my advice um it's up to you but if you start to see an opportunity to do it fairly cheaply like now just take it just take the opportunity there and then i'll probably just take that one and that one for now and accept that we're going to have to do that later um just want to keep the buses moving around this area here because, as you can see, your tr it's not just your buses either. Your trucks and your buses will use the bus lane. So that means you can deliver goods as well as move passengers around while all the other private cars are snarled up. So definitely one to, to think about. So now we've linked Romsey to Thatcham. We've linked uh, Thatcham to Mablethorpe. The buses will start to kind of spread out over time. Uh, one thing you can do if you want to... Um, it can help to space these things out. You see how they're all clustered because they all came out the the depot at the same time. What you can do is say, well, when you get to Thatcham sidings, I want you to wait for a full load, but I only want you to wait like you know, 30 seconds or 40 seconds or whatever you want. Um, that will allow them uh, to they'll sort of sit at the station for a little bit and try to fill up. And that way, if they're ever back to back, um, they'll spread out naturally. Uh, so you can do it that way. Um, the particularly important on the long bus journeys, uh, which are these things here, like Mablethorpe to Thatcham, and also uh, Thatcham to uh, Romsey, that one there. It's important on the longer journeys because if they're traveling, you know, completely empty, they're not going to make any money. They're going to cost you money. So it's it's better to, uh, to wait. Full load, 40 seconds, there we go. Uh, it's better to wait on the long runs, but don't have them wait too long because passengers are very time sensitive. Um, 
which they are in most transport games. But that will just help. You'll see it happen now. They'll just um, naturally start to sort of space out. Also, make sure that they're coming into their own um, their own line. Sometimes, as you can see, what's happened here, because I just saw a light blue bus come in with a dark blue bus. And that's another reason that I colour my vehicles, is because I can see problems. Like, I just saw then a light blue, you see it? A light blue bus and a dark blue bus on the same platform. That's a mistake. And the reason is, by default, the game has just chosen the same platform. It's annoying, but it happens. So you click on Thatcham Sidings, click on the platform number, and we'll punt the blue one over there like that. Always keep them on separate platforms. Um, that way they don't um, hold each other up, because... This dark blue one is going to wait for 40 seconds, whereas the other ones are just, you know, going straight through. He's waiting for 40 seconds as well. The other thing to, matter, to keep in mind, can't get my words out, is if you have too many buses waiting, they will back up and then they'll block the entrance. Um, there are solutions for that. You can have multiple entry points, uh, like this, just to make sure they can get into their own platform. You know, it's a perfectly valid thing to do. You can have them just come on their own platform like that. Just build them a little one-way road. Just like that. Um, and that will stop that from happening. But obviously if the queue gets too much, then they'll block each other anyway. But these will space out in a minute. They're, they're all fine. But just little tips and tricks that you can use when you're playing the game. Anyway, I think we've done enough in this episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something. Um, don't forget to leave your comments, suggestions, uh, thoughts, ways you do things. Um, I'm sure I've made mistakes, <laughs> and I'm sure you'll point them out. <laughs> but the main thing is have fun and to just kind of share the, the knowledge. So until the next one, guys, take care and happy transporting.